Are you looking for a device that can save you money, and at the same time deliver movies and TV shows in HD quality? Then you've come to the right channel. Presenting, the latest TV box to run on Android 7.1. This box, is the MiCool M8S Pro. Android 7.14K TV Box. In my last presentation, I described the M8S Pro as the TV box that hits the sweet spot when it comes to hardware and price, so after the break, I'll be doing a review of its hardware and features, along with benchmarks to see how it scores, so sit tight, I'll be back in a moment. Take advantage of the latest Fast and Furious movie promotion currently running during the month of April and May, with deals and savings, on exciting car gear, remote control vehicles, outing essentials, and super electronics, brought to you by none other than GearBest.com, bringing to you yet another great and exciting promotion, see the link in the description area for more information. Welcome back. And what we have is this white box that the device comes in. The box is pretty basic, and all we have is some information on the back. It shows that the box comes with an octa-core CPU, and the CPU model is the Emilogic S912 CPU. It has 3GB of RAM, and 16GB of internal storage. It can play 4K videos at 60 frames per second. It has HDR display, and it has H265 HEV CD coding. It's time to unpack the contents of this box. In the box, as you can see we have the MiCool M8S Pro unit itself. You get one infrared remote, one HDMI cable, one 5 volts 2 amps power adapter, and a user's guide. Let's examine the box. To the back, you have one HDMI port, one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port. You have one audio video port, and a power adapter jack. To the side, you have two USB ports, and an SD card slot. There is nothing to the front and to the other side, just some ventilation holes. To the bottom, you have four rubber studs, and some more ventilation holes. The box is made of plastic, and it is small enough to fit into the palm of your hands. The box comes with an infrared remote, and I advise getting yourself a Bluetooth Air mouse or a touchpad keyboard for easy navigation. I will now connect this box to my TV, and when I return we'll have the rest of the review. So I've connected the box to the TV. And from this point I'll be using my screen capture device. The startup animation is the same as in most of their boxes, and as we come to the launcher, they also use the same launcher from previous models. The launcher doesn't come with a navigation bar at the bottom, which proved itself to be quite useful in the normal operations of boxes. The cascade button used on navigation bars are quite useful when it comes to multitasking, and the home and back buttons provide instant return to the home screen at any point when necessary. A navigation bar comes in handy if you use an air mouse or regular mouse to control your TV box. On this launcher, you can add shortcuts to this area by simply clicking on the add button, and selecting which app you would like to add. However, there is no option to remove these shortcuts from the launcher. You have to uninstall the application to remove it. If we go to the app section, all we have is some core system apps like File Browser, App Installer, the Google Play Store, Google Chrome, YouTube, Media Center, Miracast, Netflix, and TV Center. 
so I'll pause this video for a second to install my system and benchmarking applications, along with a custom navigation bar of my own, so don't go anywhere, I'll see you in a second. So I am back. And in this segment, the first thing I like to check is to see if the box is rooted. And it shows here that the box is not rooted, and the operating system is Android 7.1.1 Nougat. While we are on the subject of root access, let's check for any available updates for this box. And it says that there are no new firmware versions found at this time. Let's take a look at its system and hardware information. Under system information, it shows that the manufacturer is MLogic, and the model is the M8S Pro. Below here it shows that the box has 3 GB of RAM, and the remaining RAM and internal storage after the Android installation and system apps. Under CPU information, it shows that the CPU is an octa-core Cortex-A53 CPU, running on a 64-bit system, with a max CPU clock range of 1.5 GHz. Under display information, it shows that the GPU is the Mali T820 Tri-Core GPU, with a refresh rate of 60 Hz. Under network information, it shows that I'm connected to my 5.8 GHz Wi-Fi band. And just below here it shows the signal strength, the link speed and the frequency. Under Android information, it shows that the version is Android 7.1.1 Nougat. And below here it shows that the box is not rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the box's normal operating temperature is between 40 to 65 degrees Celsius, and this tends to increase with the level of activity on the box. Under codex information, it displays a list of all the codecs installed on the box. You have codecs like H264 HEVC and VP90 coding. However, H265 is supposed to be in this list as it is stated in the description, but it's not. And that's it for system and hardware information. I'll now start the benchmark segment with some memory read and write speeds. And the results show that the box has a RAM copy speed of 2744 megabits per second, which is a bit on the low side when compared to other boxes in its class. The internal memory has a read speed of 54, and a write speed of 16, and the SD card slot has a read speed of 18, and a write speed of 13. I will now test some Wi-Fi network speeds. And from the results, it seems that this box does not have the best Wi-Fi reception, resulting in speeds lower than what my router provides. I now turn to the Antuta benchmark. The Antuta benchmark is one of the most popular applications that performs a comprehensive test on 3D graphics, memory performance, CPU capabilities, and overall user experience performance. In the end, the Mikul M8S Pro got an Antuta score of 39,216. Another benchmark is the Geekbench 4 benchmark. This application focuses on the box's CPU, and it performs a series of timed tasks to measure the CPU's capabilities. After all tests were completed, the Mikul M8S Pro got a Geekbench 4 score of 465 single core, and 2402 multi core. And the last of the benchmarks is the Ice Storm Extreme GPU test. This application performs a comprehensive test on the box's 3D graphics, processing of pixels and vertices, and it also performs a physics test to measure the box's ability to render high graphics details during gameplay. In the end, the Mikul M8S Pro got a score of 5194. And that's it for the benchmarks. I'll now run some 4K videos with various frames, and we'll get to see how the box handles them.
Well as you can see the results are the same as in most of the other TV boxes in its class. It played most of the 4K videos with the exception of the two jellyfish videos which had higher bit rates. For my final demonstration, I'm running a game called Real Racing 3, so let's take in some racing action. The game ran ok, but the graphics was not of the highest quality. So in summary, the Mi Cool M8S Pro is an average TV box, but it fell a bit short in the RAM copy speed, the Wi-Fi speeds, and the box is not rooted. It managed to play some 4K videos without any problems, and had difficulty with the usual two jellyfish videos, even though it runs on the latest version of Android 64-bit operating system, and it comes with DDR4 memory with Bluetooth 4.1, a bit more effort could have been placed on the quality build of the box. Hence why there's a low price tag on this device. So I have come to the end of my review, for more information on the Mi Cool M8S Pro, see the link in the description area. Thanks for watching, remember to take advantage of the Fast and Furious 8 savings promotion between the 24th to the 28th of April. Also remember to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to this channel for more TV box stop videos.